Hello, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Ongaku to You, the podcast where three friends come together and break down what's new in the Japanese music industry. This is the podcast for the week of May 24th, 2019. I'm your host, Ken, and with me we have Gray. What's happening, dudes? And that's it. Another Dos Compadre episode, mostly because Luna is tearing down the house right now. <laughs> that's what it looked like on our group chat. Like, that house looks mildly demolished. Yeah, so she's being a foreman today. For a woman today, I guess. She... <laughs> that's, that's a good joke. But yeah, just us, the Dos Compadres, as usual. But yeah, how have you been? Missed you. No, we didn't have Well, I missed you during the point five episode. <laughs> yeah, during the point five episode. Uh, I'm doing good. It's It's been one of those weeks. I had to tell my boss yesterday that I'm quitting in less than a month. So that was an experience. Other than that, hanging in there as much I can. It, it's, it's, it's okay. How have you been, bud? Alive. <laughs> We have this group that is that have brought in like close to two two thousand people. I hate dealing with this group because they just oh, make yeah. random ass tours on the fly, and they're just like, "Yeah, can we have it like later on today?" No, you can't. And of course, they're all like vendors that I need to call to make these tours, so I can't just will and willy nillyly just book the tour. Yikes. But that's just a drop in the bucket compared to the next one that I'm going to be doing because right after I come back from Japan, an even bigger group is coming that could be close to three to 5,000 people. That's a lot of peeps, dog. Yeah, and like every tour like that is popular for the, like, the next two or three weeks is going to be like brim maxed to like 20 or 30 people. But True. it is what it is. You have my sympathy, bud. Well, yeah, I'm going to be all jet-lagged and stuff and then have to deal with that all week. Uh, it's only a week, though, so... Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, what have we been listening to? Let's start with you, Gray. Well, I've had not Batman on repeat all week. <laughs> I mean, The Dark Knight. <laughs> yeah, 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 that song. I've had that on repeat all week. Uh, that the song is insane. Uh, I really hope that they their next single is just the the Crown Prince of Crime. <laughs> I was thinking the Boy Wonder. Oh god! <laughs> Should that have been the B side track? Uh, what was the B side track? Don't worry. Uh, oh no, pop pop. That was the that was the B side track. <laughs> other than that I've been listening to LOL per usual we'll be talking about them a little later and Wednesday night like I've had I've had their uh, album for weeks and I've listened to the album itself but I haven't checked out the DVD yet so Wednesday night I had to do work on the site and I decided I would pop in the DVD for the Mad Kids Circus album. And I checked that out. It was over an hour long. And it is really good. It's, it's, it's entirely a concert that they did. And then at the end, there's the music video for Faith and the making of Faith. And I wasn't expecting to hear Puzzle at all in this concert. Because it's not on the album. But Goodbye is. I'm still bitter about that. But... When puzzle came on, like I was, I was typing. I was mid sentence typing something, and I literally slid my computer away from me. I was like, "Go away!" Puzzle is on, and I proceeded <laughs> to like lose my mind because <laughs> I, lo I love that song. That it's my favorite Mad Kids. Uh, there's several songs that they do that I really like, but Puzzle is by by and large my favorite. And I, I was very giddy with joy when they did that. So, yeah. Yeah, th that was a wonderful surprise. And it's right at the end of it, too. So, I wasn't expecting it. 
I was like I said, I was really bitter when they put goodbye on the album. They didn't put puzzle. Well, puzzle and goodbye are both on the rise single. So I was like, why did you put puzzle? Why did you put goodbye here and not rise or, or puzzle? Like it, it confuses me. Like I'm gonna have to go out and actually purchase the rise single just for this song because I love it so much. But other than that. Uh, I checked out Dream Shiz- Shizuka. Is that was? I'm now blanking on her her name. Shizuka, She's- yes. Shizuka, yeah. Uh, I checked her out this week because she has a new single coming. It's actually already available that you can check out. That that's really good. I recommend that. And other than that, I can't think of anything new I've been listening to. That should cover everything. But yeah, going back to the. With the single part, it's so that, you know, they made you buy the single because uh, only the B-side is only on that certain single and not available for the album. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. Yeah. I do find it funny that Sayonara and Goodbye are right beside each other. <laughs> like, and Sayonara is a great song. And then, like, you hear Goodbye. And I, it's not that I hate Goodbye per se, but I find it to be generic. What have you been listening to, bud? Uh, you know, the usual, the Juicy Playlist, the Pop and Party, Rosalia, the Review Starlight soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, that game. You know, they're doing a Aladdin event as we're speaking right now, and my favorite seiyuu is Aladdin in that one, and the Gacha Gods, the RNG Jesus, has not been kind to me, and I'm like, <sighs> on that teetering edge, it's like, Am I gonna drop money for stars? Am I gonna drop money for stars? What's what songs do they have from Aladdin? No, they don't do covers. They don't do covers. It's oh, not, okay. It's, it's not like Bang Dream where they do covers. It's gotcha. They do their own stage sides songs. So, like a lot of their things are like shows that are that have been turned into stage shows. Like they did one for the Three Musketeer events, and they have one for for Aladdin because Aladdin was a stage side show at one point in time. So I can't wait for when they finally do La La Land. <laughs> oh, that would be dope! I love that movie. Uh, I was really interested to hear what the girl idol version of "You've Never Had a Friend Like Me" would sound like. That would be weird. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can watch how Will Smith does it. What, what is it, this week or next week? I went and saw it yesterday. Ah. So I guess that <laughs> time's the reason why they, they dropped the Aladdin. Aladdin yeah. Event. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it was it, just it, coincidence timing there. Today is the official release date. I caught the, the early heads up of it. It's actually really good, surprisingly enough. I wasn't expecting a whole lot. And it was funny because I was telling my mother... Because Brightburn also releases today. And I've been more excited for Brightburn than I have Aladdin for a long, long time. And I wound up catching Aladdin instead of Brightburn last night. Because I was like, eh. I want to see something lighthearted and fun. And Aladdin's always been one of my favorite Disney movies. So it, it, it was surprisingly good. Naomi Scott kills it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, going back. Yeah, nothing, nothing much besides that. Well, I mean, we all we all have our comfort foods. Like, LOL is like comfort food to me now. So, I was, I was talking to a coworker today, and I was like, "But, like, we were in the truck together." I was like, "Just a heads up, I gotta listen to some comfort music," and I put on "Just Go" by LOL. So, well, it's not that. It's just I I've been having things done, and I just don't have time to go search for music. <laughs> I've been I've been patiently waiting for my. She is Summer CD because the album dropped this past week. I think Ghost like oh, Girlfriend's yeah, one, Ghost like Girlfriend's one dropped next week, so that'll so probably be that for the next two weeks. <laughs> We're gonna talk about an album here in a little bit. I'm probably gonna pick up because I was really impressed with what I heard. But yeah, with that, I guess let's continue on to the news here. Release news as always for the first things, and first is our indie corner band Inc announced that they will not be only dropping a brand new single called Crossing at the end of the month on May 28th, but they will be collaborating with label P-Vine Records to be releasing a brand new album called Crossing, all in uppercase compared to the single, which is just lowercases. 
on June 19th. This will be the latest release by the band since their EP Tetra last April. And while currently Crossing, the single will only drop with one track, Crossing will have 11. And they also announced a brand new live event. If you guys are interested, go check that out. I am super excited for this release. I've been patiently waiting for them to drop this news because on their Twitter, they've been teasing it for like the past couple months now. And kind of like with the Narkaritaki stuff, they finally are able to announce it. So I'm quite, quite excited to to see this. This is one band that I am looking forward to, hopefully on seeing when I go to Japan. But yeah, with that, let's continue on to our next piece of news. And that is King and Prince finally gives us a little bit more info about their newest album, self-titled King and Prince, dropping on June 19th. It will include a total of 16 tracks and will come in three different editions. You can check out all the lovely editions on our site along with the track listing. It's looking really, really good because I want one of the limited B times ones because it includes tracks from their Johnny's Juniors days. And those things are really, really hard to find after they form as a regular group, so to speak. I was kind of eyeballing the limited Blu-ray type a edition myself the type a yeah the type a is looking really good because they have like several different versions of the title song naughty girl which is going to be the main song for this album so they have like a dance version and stuff like that so it's interesting that they're doing it this way and you know they they have like a premium talk i believe in one of the editions too which I, the edition a so they talk about like the future and stuff like during their Johnny's days. So it's really good to see like a group kind of begin like this because we kind of get to see what they're what they're thinking about internally as they blossom together as a group, which is really really interesting in my mind. That's a meaty CD to 16 tracks. Lord. Yeah. I mean, they're like one of the biggest things that they've done for like the past couple of years now for newer things since Johnny Jr.'s graduations. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking really forward to this. It's also dropping on June 19th, so I'm hoping that I could get the limited edition while I'm there in Japan. Hopefully they have copies still. But yeah, continuing on, Sumika shows us how to mix it up with their brand new single called Equal Slash Traveling which will drop on June 12th. This will be the last release by the band since March 13th, uh, their, their single Chime back in March, and will have four tracks total. Currently, Equal is the opening theme for popular an- a baseball anime mix, and will have two editions, a standard CD edition and a limited CD, a uh, two CD limited edition. So I'm looking forward to this because I've been enjoying mix very, very much so. Mostly because I really do like baseball anime, so. And Sumika is a great band. They just got released. They just got announced that they are doing the day one for Rock in Japan. So not only Narkaritaki is there, Sumika is also going to be there. So I'm really hoping that I'm able to see them. It's going to be a good day for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Not so good day for my wallet. <laughs> uh, sacrifices must be made. Sacrifices <laughs> will be made. <laughs> <laughs> Like ramen. <laughs> ramen for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> well, but ramen in Japan's way better than ramen here in America. Oh, yeah, it's going to be the pay package stuff that Ando Sensei, the lover, a lord and savior of cup of noodle, <laughs> made. But yeah. Continuing on, it is that Acid Man, if you guys don't know, they are a three member rock band. They announced that they will be remastering their first major album called so exclusively for vinyl on october 30th if you guys are fans of them you should know that the specific date is holds special in the band's heart at it is the date that they originally debuted 18 years prior this comes as a surprise because they don't usually release vinyl stuff but you know that that's a hipster thing now in japan to do alt releases from compared to just cd and dvd and blu-ray releases they've been doing this vinyl kick and this whole like cassette tape kick also well usually the way that it works it feels like is whatever was popular in america wait four years four or five years and then japan will be popular in japan so i'm not surprised vinyl and japan does it and then they do it better (laughs) well they've had five years to learn (laughs) yeah that is that is great (laughs) 
But yeah, to commemorate such a release, they, the acid band will also be having a brand new live tour called the So Sangen, starting from October 30th to December 12th. If you guys are interested, you can check out all the lovely live tour dates on our site. However, unfortunately, there are no pre-order links on our site, but we'll update you guys when it does. Unfortunately, CD Japan, they, they don't understand how vinyl works, so they don't... Sh- just don't carry it all the time i think i think because it's a much more difficult shipping item because of how the record might break i I think it's just um i mean that that's that's possible just the logistics and especially because it's international like there's so much more that could go wrong with a a vinyl it's it's, because like the good thing about like cds is they're packaged in hard cases but you typically don't package vinyls in, in hard cases. They're just in a little paper slip. So, yeah, I could see that. All right. Continuing on with the news, I have the next one. And we're going to get to talk about a little guy that I think we all quite enjoy a little bit. Uh, Syrup has a brand new music video for his upcoming album. The music video is called Evergreen, and it is, it's being used to promote his new album, which is titled Feel Good. And the album is actually due out next week on May 29th, so it's just right around the corner. And it's only going to be CD only, but it's going to come with 12 tracks, and it looks really good. Uh, Ken, I know you're a huge Syrup fan. Are you looking to pick this up? I'm looking to collect this and the vinyl version that is only for Japan. (laughs) (laughs) And Actually, like, this mm. this would be dope on vinyl. The more I think about it, like this would be insanely dope on vinyl. You know, it's funny is because he partnered with Levy, so all of his vinyl stuff is coated in Levy Jeans pa- uh, packaging. So it's mm, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> <sighs> yep. I'm just if you gonna have a vinyl player it, in my house. <laughs> I mean, they still make cabinets that you can buy. Don't tempt me, man. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're as excited as Ken is about the new Surf album, you can pre-order it on the site. Moving on to the next article, uh, Wanima is releasing a new single called Summer Trap. It's going to come out July 17th. It One of the tracks on the single is called uh, Natsu no Doko Kahe, and that's being used for the Mats- uh, Matsuya Cider commercial. And if you would like to pre-order your copy, you can do so on on the site. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to this. You know, Wanima is been a band now that they're being a little bit more active. I'm kind of keeping my eyes on now. <laughs> yeah, well, after they signed up to to the like their major record label, they went quiet for a little while. And well, they the- were doing festivals all this time. That's why they were doing. A, they did the tour for their album and then just stayed quiet for an entire year, just doing all those, all those festivals and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they're coming back because. The, like their last single is like super good, and I, I'm I can't wait to 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 ch- check out the this new one. I wish they had that that Matsuya cider commercial on YouTube so we could just preview it. But Mitsuya, Mitsuya. What am I saying? Matsuya. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I mean, my bad. As much as much as I would love to eat gyudon right now, Mitsuya <laughs> is the company. <laughs> Oh, uh, Gyudon sounds so good, and I only have a month left to enjoy it. Uh, oh boy! But yeah, they're they're they also got announced that they're going to rock in Japan. They're going to be on the fourth. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go there because I'm going to receive Rosalia. <laughs> but you know what's funny? I, I would be there on the tenth. I really want to go to the tenth. I'm like thinking about like, can I just not go to work for like a week and? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Cause the if ten- you have paid vacation, yes. Yes, I do. But the thing is, I need that paid vacation for Luna's wedding. So. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. That's, because that, that's... the tenth, the tenth has all our favorite bands. It has I'm Young and Scandal. Uh uh-huh. Little Glee Monster. <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. So yeah, 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 yeah. 
Just kill and me then, now so my soul can fly over there. I think that'll be way fa like cheaper and the faster. 11th, the eleventh is having not only Uvo World, but <sighs> I'm in a parade, which is a band that I've been kind of watching for from afar. Silent Siren and freaking pop and party. I need to go on the eleventh, and including Momoito Clover and Lenny Claude Fiction. So they'll probably just <sighs> be playing a lot of the. My Hero Academia songs. <laughs> so, that's what it sounds like. I need to be there. This sounds like the festival made for me. Oh, my lord. Yeah, like, this This year's one is really, really freaking good. And I'm like, oh, man, I wish. Like, the the company that I work for, their Japanese branch, is having a, a exclusive tour where they just buy, like, a bunch of tickets. And they, they give you this. They give you room. They give you a hotel. They give you places to... Like the buses, free bus locations from here and there. So maybe next year. Yeah, that's that's. Oh man, no! Oh, but this year's is so good. This year's so good. Oh my lord, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, I I, I believe Honeyma is in one of them. Yeah, they're they're on the they're on the fourth, the Sunday. Golly. I really did like again. So I'm 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 looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to this new single, regardless. Continuing on, too bad Luna isn't here because she would just tell me how I was so wrong with this article, but... <laughs> Vocalist Milia Kato announced that she will be having a brand new single called I Got Voodoo on June 19th. Just, Jesus, June 10th and... Or June 12th and June 19th is going to be stacked for our wallets here. This yep. will be the latest release by Kato since the announcement of her marriage and pregnancy this past April. And I'll have three tracks sold. The first one being a popular remix of her song, Saiko na Shiawase, originally released back in 2017. This single also serves to commemorate Kato's 15th year in the music industry and will be dubbed part one of her anniversary series. So you hear that, Luna? I know you're probably not listening to this, but your wallet <laughs> is going to get screwed. <laughs> But yeah, it is a return to form, so to speak, because I Got Fudu is a very, very powerful ballad song. And she released a small te a teaser for it on her official YouTube channel, which you can check out on the site. You can check out all the lovely track listings and the editions, which is it comes with a standard and limited edition. So go check that out on the site. So Luna, I know you're not listening to this, but um, goodbye to your remaining of a bank account as of right now <laughs> i don't know if she has any of a bank account left she sunk it all into a into a home <laughs> but yeah continuing on is mayen if you guys don't know who she is she is a very very popular anime singer and she announced that she will be dropping both her brand new single kiba to subasa and her experimental mini album yell both on july 31st making this a double trouble release we previously announced that she will be doing this when sh she announced the stuff for Yell, but now we have more information on Kiba no Subasa. Kiba no Subasa, which is the ending theme for upcoming Tokyo Mix Samurai anime Kocho Angyo Wakini Nobunaga, which will also air in July. The single will release with three tracks total and is written and composed by Dan Meikawa and Tomo Tomoya Kawasaki, respectively, and Junichi Sato who is helping with the arrangements. All three of them are in veteran industries for anime songs. So <laughs> Yes. Yes. So like every one of those names is like, man, we talk about them all the time. So Yell, which we talked about previously, is going to be used to commemorate Mayan's 10th year in the music industry and will have seven tracks total. And she will not be alone with the help of conceptualizing this album. Anime Lisa will be actually coming in and helping out and Famed vocalist Ai Otsuka is also going to be contributing in some way. If you guys don't know, Ai Otsuka was one of the top vocalists back in the mid, early to mid aughts and was rivaling yep. Kodokumi and Utada for numbers because she was very, very, very popular back in the day. Now she kind of took more of a producing role. So I'm, I'm happy to see that she's still involved with the music industries in some way or form can pre-order both Kiba to Tsubasa and Yell on our site. You can also check out the track listings for both. I'm very, very excited. Mayan is an amazing talent, along with Anime Lisa. So 
She has a beautiful voice. I, I will I will always admit that. And for next up, popular three member hip hop and R and B group Mflow dropped the music video for the recently released track Starstruck on their official YouTube channel. Oh, that's how you say that. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it, they just took out all the the all the A's, the vowels, all the vowels. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my lord, I I've been staring at this name for a day and a half trying to figure out how to say it. <laughs> Starstruck, which is currently available on all the music streaming sites, will be the latest track done by the group since their their song Piece of Me back in October of last year. And the, the music video is very, very interesting because it borrows the style of Max Headroom signal, signal tracking, which took back back in the 80s, which a group just hijacked a, a lovely television tv show and just did these really psychedelic things it's very very (laughs) interesting and it's a very very thing about you know media and like brainwashing things it's it's, it goes really deep into that you can look into that more if you guys want to but it's interesting that uh that they decided to do something like that and i can't wait to see more and what's interesting enough is they cryptically put an image that says mflow 3.0 at the end of the music video, giving weight that, you know, this version of Mflow isn't going away anytime soon. And I am really, really happy about that. You can check out Starstruck on our site and go check it out on Apple Music and stuff like that. And Spotify, I'm pretty sure it's on there already. Yeah, I, well, I was going to say, because I was... I haven't seen the music video, but this morning I was looking at Inflow stuff because it's been a while since I listened to like their more recent stuff, and I was wanting to listen to it a little bit of this morning, and I saw Starstruck on their Apple Music page. So it is available on Apple Music. You can go check it out now, and it's really good. Like Starstruck is really, really good. So I'm, I'm always eager to see what, what Inflow is doing next. Going on to the next album, famous, eh, yeah, voice actress and singer uh, Kaori Ishihara has uh, released a new ad for her upcoming single, Tempest. You can, so if if you're curious as to what the song is going to sound like, you can go to the website and we do have the YouTube video posted in the article and you can get a little preview for what you can expect for it. It's about a minute and a half long. It's really good. It's, It's surprisingly good. You can also pre-order the standard and limited edition on the site. The single doesn't come out till mid-July uh, at on July 17th, so it's still a good amount of ways away. So, but if you are interested, you can check her out on the site. Yeah, I mean, I'm very, very interested to see how this is going to sell. <laughs> it sounded pretty good, though, regardless. Yeah. The, the the teaser does sound really good. It'll be interesting to see if it charts. And going on up, it is... Legendary stage side actor Shin Tamura announced that he will be doing a solo debut into the music industry. If you guys don't know who he is, he is more famously known for a lot of, a lot, a lot of stage shows. He is part of the Token Rabu series, and he... He is going to play Midoriya in the upcoming My Hero Academia stage show. So he commented on the debut saying that while he's nervous about it, he believes that his singing ability and that he'll be able to look forward to this new quote unquote battle that is the solo music industry. His singles unfortunately is unintended at the time of this writing, but it will feature two editions, a standard CD only edition and a CD plus photo book limited edition. And of course, because I don't know if stage side shows are popular in CD Japan, there is no pre-order links as of right now, but you'll be damn well once we get more information on the single, we'll re- re- report again. So yeah, um, you, you, you'll, you know, <laughs> I figured you, you would. You know, it's it's interesting that they're doing the stage show for My Hero, though. Yeah, that was, uh, uh, that's what got me. I was like, ooh. Was... I mean, but I mean, they did a stage show for Bleach, Naruto. I mean, they do it for all the really popular Shonen series, so I'm not entirely surprised. One Piece got a stage show. But, no, nah, this is interesting. I'll have to check this out. But yeah, continuing on up, it is Kotoko is actually coming back bringing a brand new album called Tear Cyclone Say on June 26. This is going to be a compilation piece for her album 
Tear Cyclone Kai, which was released also last June, and will bookend her 15th year anniversary in the music industry. Leaning towards a more emotional theme of Tears and Awakening, Kotoko employed the same creative team as she did for Kai to help cultivate this project once again. It will re- Say will release with two different editions, a CD only uh, standard edition and a limited CD plus Blu-ray edition, which will include her one woman live back in Tokyo Sutaya East in last September. You can pre-order all the lovely stuff on our site and I'm looking forward to it as she is an amazing vocalist, very, very emotional vocalist though. So. I've never heard of her, but she's been around 15 years, so she's got, she's got some heft in her. <laughs> yeah. Moving on... I'm really, really excited for for this. I, I had never heard of the guy until I, I had to write the article for it, but I checked out the music video and it, it, I got to say, I was like super impressed. I'm going to buy, I'm probably going to pick up this, what we're getting ready to talk about. Anyways, I was going to jump to the meat of the matter. Sonari has announced that he will be doing his very first tour across Japan. The tour dates and the cities have been announced. I don't think the vin- the exact venues have been determined yet. So, but if you're going to be in Japan between October 19th of 2019 or and November, check out the site and see if any of these dates line up with where you would like to be and you can go check them out. So, he for people who don't know who Sonari is, he is a 16-year-old rapper, and he's getting ready to release his very first album called Six Six Sixteen. It's spelled like the word sick with an S and then teen. It's, it still sounds pretty much like 16, but it it's spelled just a little different. But it's just going to be a CD only. It's going to come with 11 tracks total, and you can check out his single Mayday, which was released not too long ago. It's on the site. I really encourage you to check it out. Like I really thought this was amazing. I know I sh- I don't know if you got a chance to check this out, Ken. I I did post it in the in the group chat, but if you have checked him out, I recommend it cuz his style I think suits you just like really nice. Yeah. It was it was interesting to see his style. So I was like, hmm, I don't know how to feel about it, but I'm looking forward to his career nonetheless. Yeah. It, I, like, I was surprised because I, I, I read like 16 year old rapper. I was expecting, I don't like Snoop Dogg or something, you know, just like something more traditional, I guess. And what you get is something not, not really close to any of that. It, it, it kind of reminded me, reminded me a little bit of syrup in uh see i'm trying to think of a way to describe it uh it's more of a fusion it's yeah. a fusion r&b yeah 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 that that's a good way to put it and so yeah like he's he's doing something really different so i i, I really recommend checking this guy out he, he he does not sound like a lot of things you've heard and and yeah I, i'm probably going to pick up this album like this this was this was a really Really cool surprise for the week, and I can't wait. This is going to be awesome. Yeah. Finally, going back to Mflow. Speaking of things that are very fusion like, <laughs> after just releasing their song Starstruck, they announced that they will be dropping a brand new EP called Mortal Portal EP on July third. This will be the last physical release done by Mflow since the Tripod EP two back in March of last year the ep will release with three tracks previously released track starship and mars drive along with a brand new track echo it it to that that one i'll have a little bit more trouble <laughs> Ec- ecto like um ecto ectoplasm yeah 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 i think that's what they're going for <laughs> all three tracks will have both an instrumental and acapella version with ecto having an additional additional remake done by up-and-coming dj sasuke making mortal porto having a definitive release for this certain single for fans of mflow i can't wait i I'm very, very interested in how this will sell, honestly, because the Tripod EP2, unfortunately, didn't even rank last time, but it could be that it'll have much more success internationally, so I'm I'm looking forward to this. 
No, this is going to be dope. You can check out all the lovely, lovely releases on our site. You can see the track listing and covers for it. You could also see that it will release with two different editions, a CD only standard edition and a CD plus DVD limited edition. But yeah, going on to regular news here is Subaki Factory unfortunately loses another member. After the dust appeared to have settled for their loss of Kiki Asakura due to injury, the nine-member idol group Subaki Factory announced that their member Kisasora Ninuma will also be taking a short hiatus due to another injury. Ninuma stated that she had lost her balance while going down the stairs and fractured her coccyx, and I can't imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think what body part that is. I think it's in the knee somewhere, like in the leg. It's, no, it's your tailbone. It's your tailbone. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. It's, it's the oh. it's the proper name for your tail I, th- I thought gluteus maximus was the proper name for the uh, no no that's the muscle oh. that's the muscle for your for your butt well aren't we glad i but never bone, went into medical school <laughs> the bone is technically that bone that sticks it's your tail oh my well, lord how do you uh i guess sitting's gonna be pleasant for her for a while yeah so she'll be taking a one month break to let it heal and <laughs> Just oh. like Asakura's news, this just so happened to happen in the middle of Tsubaki Factory's live tour. Oh. Now they're down two members. <laughs> <laughs> and she stated that, you know, she is sorry to let her fellow members and fans down, but she wants her injury to properly heal, and once recovered, she'll show her fans the high-level performance she knows she can exhibit. We at Ongakudu wish her a very speedy recovery and good God, please protect yourself. <laughs> yes. Can you even dance on that injury? No, I think like any motion like of like straightening out your back and stuff like that will probably be hurting. Yeah. Bad. I I imagine she's probably in a wheelchair. No. Nah, well, a real soft it's, and comfy more... wheel, wheel, wheelchair maybe. Yeah, something it probably hurts for her sitting more than anything else. Oh, that's true. Poor girl. But, Poor girl. Yeah, I mean Ugh. that uh, yeah. It looks like this is our only piece of news that we had for today. Unless you want to talk a little bit more about the other news. Yeah, because I, th- I feel like if we wait till next week, it'll just be too old. So it's not quite on the site yet, but it, it'll be going up soon. We'll, we're going to talk about this here briefly. Unfortunately, NGT48 apparently can't catch a break. So even after it's been dissolved, they're still in the news and... One of their members, Yuka Ogina, has been receiving death threats from a fan. Now, this guy has been arrested, and he he is in custody, so she is safe. She is fine, but he sent multiple death threats. Uh, he, he faxed them, which... I, I thought was really interesting. No, who faxes nowadays? But he Japan, Japan <laughs> they all have fax machines in in their in their houses. So well, he put his to some effect. He he faxed death threats to various news outlets and to the Niigata government offices. So and to the agency that represents Okino too. So they found this guy and. The agency that represents Ogino Horipro, I think that's how you say that. They are seeking a strict punishment for him, so hopefully, you know, he does his time. And I'm just kind of glad she's safe. Like, that whole group's gone through trauma as of late. I mean, you have the uh, the assault back in December, like, like NGT48, like, even after it dissolved, it can't catch a break. Like it, it, this is this is crazy. So yeah, and I I know she hasn't graduated, so I guess she's go- looking to be whatever takes the place of NGT forty eight. So, but that is it for the news. So for this week's music corner, I chose LOL. I I don't think that surprises too many people. I'm not really surprised, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> uh, when I when I heard that you. W- we encompass this as a last ditch effort because Luna, unfortunately, ha- it was supposed to be Luna's turn this week, but yes. she had to demolish a house, so she wasn't able to do it. So when I heard you had an ace in the hole, I was like, "Oh my god, it's probably LOL, isn't it?" And sure enough, <laughs> it, 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 I do have another ace in the hole. 
But <laughs> but I'm gonna save that. I'm saving that one. So I swear, if it's little glee monsters, I'm gonna strike. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead and buy your plane ticket. <laughs> oh boy. <sighs> so LOL was formed all the way back in 2014. And their name obviously comes from the internet acronym or texting acronym, LOL, which stands for laughing out loud. And the reason they chose this name was because they wanted to be a group that makes people smile and impress people. There obviously is five members. There's two guys. Nato is the oldest and Yusuke is the other one. I think he's also older like the way that it goes, like the two guys are the oldest and then the girls are younger. So you have Honoka, who is the primary rapper of the group. And he, most of the time when you hear somebody rapping, it, it is Honoka. And then you have Hibiki and Mocha, who also are vocalists. And Mocha is the youngest of the group. She's 17. Everybody else is in their 20s. Naoto's 24. And I think Yusuke's 23. But their very, very first single was Fire, and that was released on August 12th of 2015, and they've gone on to release a total of two albums and nine singles, with the last one being Sayonara no Kitsetsu, which was released this past March. And I've talked about LOL many, many times. I love them. For me personally, I like their style. I th- I was telling Ken earlier in the week that because when we write the article, you know, he, he he's like, what makes them stand out and unique? And I, I was telling him they they're unique in, in my opinion, how well they do what they do. They're very skilled in their craft and the music that they produce really it puts a smile on my face. It's something I always look forward to listening to. When you watch the music video, the choreography is just done super well. And it, it's just one of those things where, you know, little over a year, last year at this time, I had never heard of LOL. And, you know, for me to just fall in love with a group like this, it's it's super rare. I, like, it, it, it's not something that happens all the time. And and I'm, I'm just a huge fan of them now. And I, I can't wait for their next single. I'm always eager to see what they're doing next. I think that they're going to have a good long career and I'm always eager to hear what they're doing next. Real quickly, one of the songs that I absolutely love is called Just Go. I know I mentioned it earlier. It's in the middle of their LML album and that song is really, really good. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because it's on the album. It's not on the single. So if you haven't, bought the album you may not have heard it so that's why i'm particularly bringing up this one song and it it's really really good it's it it is upbeat and it's dancey but it's it 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 has like a little bit of a more serious tone and the rap break in that song is really really good like honoka just kills it and that that like just go was one of the biggest surprises on the LML album for me because that was like the first time I had heard it and I listened to it. I, it feels weird if I go one week without hearing that one particular song. I listen to it all the time and it, it's one of those songs that if I'm having a bad day, I can kind of put on and it just puts me in a good mood and I can kind of just get get through the day. It, it's provides me a lot of motivation so I, I know you guys hear me talk about them every week this this is you know the biggest sell i the like the last biggest sell i'll probably ever do for them check them out i i like i know if pop's not your thing i don't know if they're this is going to be the group that sells you on pop but if you like pop you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not listening to them because they are really good at what they do. All the vocalists are really talented, Naoto and Yusuke specifically. Because I remember when I the first time that I heard uh, Love and Smile, the like near the end of that song, Naoto hits a note. And I would play that song on repeat just so I can hear him hit that one note over and over and over again. That's how good his vocals are. And I mean, the whole group has that quality of like vocal talent uh, like i said i'm excited to see what they do next and i can't wait yeah i mean 
I had a trouble listening to them because honestly, this is, this is just completely for me. They're just a 2.0 triple A in my mind, in my mind. There were certain things that I was a little bit surprised about, specifically with their song. Hold on, I, I know I had it. Um, it. It was a certain song that I just ended up really, really liking. Trigger. I really did like Trigger a lot. But, you know, for for me, this is someone who's seen Avex do this before. I'm looking forward to their career a little bit more now because... I want them to show me something that just makes me not think of LOL or not 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 triple A because if they're going to go down this route I mean they'll find some success but you know th- that's just me personally yeah but I know other people are like that too because Renford Renford when he first saw LOL he just asked me straight up is this new generation triple A yeah well for for me and I'm only familiar with triple A as far as their first album goes and I've heard their second album so I'm not too familiar with the full breadth of their career but for me the the I think the biggest distinguishing difference between lol and triple A because I actually thought about this long and hard after our conversation the other day and I think one thing that separates them is Honoka, for lack of a, a really more elegant way of putting it. Because when AAA does like a rap song, that's the bulk of the song. And then they'll do like a regular song where they sing. So th- it, it's like there's like these, they'll, they'll, they're, like there's, the whole song is in, done in like certain styles so like if so like if there's going to be a rap song, like the full song's going to be rap. And LOL usually has a rap break in the bulk of their songs. I haven't heard a rap break in tri- in any AAA stuff. Like I said, if it's going to be a rap song, the whole song's going to be a rap song. Well, I like only only one or two songs from LOL are entire rap songs. Most of them just have a rap break in the middle of it. So for me, that's really the biggest thing that distinguishes the two. Now I know to so what you're saying is they implement a more fusion style then compared to what AAA does while coming from back in the day where they only specifically targeted one specific genre yes in a song and they kept with it while triple well lol and I've, I've I've seen hints of this with their other songs, where they encompass a more fusion style, where they have pop and rap embedded in their songs for every song. Yeah, it it's interesting nonetheless. But like I said, I'll be happy to see their career once kind of triple A's out of the picture. Like like I'm gonna someone who's been known to do this style, I've seen it before with tri- with triple A, and it doesn't really really help that it's the same freaking label too (laughs) it's the same producer right yeah it does not help that it doesn't help that correlation (laughs) yeah no i totally get that i to me i hear a difference and maybe it's because i'm more more familiar with lol than i am triple a i'm still going through triple a's career because i I still re-listen to that first album like a lot i really really like triple a but if you look at triple a too like i don't know how many more years they're going to be touring because i mean they've had they've lost two members permanently so they're they're down to five members and then their their actual leader he's not with the he's yeah. not with them currently so but you know this is like a 10-year group if we we could say the same thing about lol 10 years down the line also you know? oh yeah we just, i mean they're they're just getting started they're in their fifth year so yeah uh, so i'm who knows? Like I said, I'm just coming from it because I am a casual audience of both AAA, and I see this, and I'm immediately I just thought Triple A, and that's I remember saying this the first time you brought this up in the I, f- I forget what single they charted with, but I originally just thought nah, this is just Triple A. I think Love and S- Love and AAA. Smile was was like their was the single that charted that really turned me on to them. And they haven't, like, the last single that they released was Sayonara no Kisetsu, and th- that hit 12th. So, and they didn't, the only thing that they had released between 
uh, Love and Smile and Sayonara No Keith. That's who was their album. Like they didn't, they haven't had any singles between then. So I would recommend uh, with you, it's their web exclusive single. So like you can only listen to it through Spotify and Apple music, but that's a really beautiful song and there's no rap in that. But it's really good. I listen to that one all the time, too. And continuing on. With that, thank you very much for covering this week, though. Yeah, always a pleasure. Uh, it, it's it's fun, to, it's fun to talk about my favorite group. And, you, you know, I know not everybody is always sold on them, but, any you know, I'm always happy to talk about them. So. Yeah. With that, let's move on to the Oricon. And, oh, God, number 10. <laughs> uh, it was rough. <laughs> it is... Idol Master Cinderella Masters number 52 and 54. That tells me there are 54 freaking singles of this thing. Oh, Lord. So, I hated 53 and 54 with a <laughs> passion. 52 was, it was all right. Yeah. I, I want to kick it out of, I, I want to kick it out of bed for snacks, but 53, oh my freaking God. I don't know. 54. 54 I thought was way worse than 53. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, we can have an argument over which one was worse, but they were both terrible. It, it, it doesn't help the fact that they're, they're both freaking terrible. Yeah, they, they, they really are. They're both bad. 52 is okay. I, I'm not crazy about it, but it's not. It, if it came on the radio, I wouldn't necessarily change the channel. Yeah, yeah. It, that, that's how I feel about that song too. Because I, then again, you know, I just like ballad songs, and it's because it's just one singular single singer, yeah, doing it. It's not as bad compared to having all three of them trying to do it. Well, I don't, I don't know about you, but for me, like the music for the second one wasn't bad. It was the vocalist that made that one bad. Like I don't know if she got bad direction from the producer or whatnot, but I felt like her vocals didn't work with the music at all. Like, there's just a mismatch there. And that's what made that bad. And then, like, the opening moments of the third one made me want to go shoot people. Like, I did not like 54 <laughs> at all. And and when you were posting that, that you hated 53 more, I was like, my God. I don't know. 54 is pretty bad. Oh, my Lord. It was upbeat is the only thing I could say about that song. And that's not <laughs> helping it at all. Ugh. Yeah. But, yeah, it sold a lovely 14,808 copies. Or points there. And going on up, it is Bubblegum Magic by Kitak. This song was dope. Yeah, it, it was alright. I, I, it's standard Kitak affair. And that it's okay. I, that's all I can say about I it. I really liked it. <laughs> it's okay. Like, I, I don't know what I was expecting when I listened to it, but I was, I was fairly surprised, and I really, really liked it. I, I had a lot of fun listening to it. It's on Apple Music. I went ahead and downloaded it. I will be re-listening to that tomorrow. And this was this was really, really nice, so I, I recommend it. Two, two thumbs yeah. up. If, if you guys like Kita, go right ahead and listen to it. It's fairly, 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 fairly the same. Also, the, also that also that style. album art is really weird. Just just as a heads up. I mean, it's magic with inside bubble gum, right? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, because it looks like like the person's blowing a bubble, like a, like a like bubble gum, but it's water and there's fish in the water, so it's weird. But Bu- bubble gum magic. Yeah. And this week it sold a lovely fourteen thousand eight hundred and forty points there. And going on up, it is "Bang" by Supernova. Well, honestly, I thought you, I thought you would like this song. I don't, I don't know. It was, it was, or poppy as hell. That's all I can say. It is poppy, but I, the, the, uh, all I had was like a little snippet. I, I'd, I'd like more of the song to, to, to judge it. So I, without listening to it and without hearing a whole lot, I don't know if it's, it's super good or not. So maybe. I don't know. Supernova's on Apple Music, aren't they? It probably is. <laughs> I think so. I might be able to listen to them here. Although, to be fair, I thought Supernova was Korean. Sh- shows what I know. Shows what I know. Uh, <laughs> we, we talked about them before, and they kind of blurred that line. I remember us talking about it once before. Yeah. the uh, they're, they're definitely like on the edge. There's a bunch of Supernovas here. <laughs> but yeah, they sold a lovely 19,000 and 36 points there. And going on up, it's Sakura Kazeya Sakura 
Sakukaze by Egoist. I believe that's how we call it. E- yeah, Egoist. If I remember the anime correctly, it's been it's been a long, long time since I've seen that, and uh, I wasn't the biggest fan. But yeah, Egoist. I will say this was n- different than the other Egoist music I've heard. It was it very it, ha- it kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, Wageki Band, only not Wageki Band. Just like in that traditional in that vein of uh, tra- traditional, traditional and rock yeah band. uh Japanese music style like like no, when we say traditional we're, you know we're talking about like old Japanese music something like you would hear in a samurai movie that that aesthetic just think of that and so it was interesting I, I will say her vocals are really nice in the song but I don't know if I liked it or not I, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence a little bit I I kind of liked it and I kind of didn't at the same time because I liked her vocals, but at the same time, I felt they were a little all over the place. So it's kind of weird. But what did you think? It's all right. Like I said, it it is the anime feel version of more Wageki band. Yeah, so. yeah, it, it is like that, like Wageki band with an like anime version. So yeah, but yeah, it's it sold a lovely twenty one thousand two hundred and eighty seven points. And going on up, it is number six with Jun Retsu no Happy Birthday by Jun Retsu. They're kind of a little bit on the older side, and they're kind of a pillar in the the music industry. So it really goes to show with their style. <laughs> yes. Yes. I like their suits. That's, that's the only thing you like. <laughs> I mean, the song was okay. I mean, it was like, like, happy birthday. It, 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 and it's it sounds like a happy birthday song, too. Like, the, like... Ima- like just imagine what the song you think would sound like and it's pretty much how the song sounded so yeah i like the suits uh the, the song was nice it was nice and catchy and well, no, it, i don't know if i'd run out and buy the single per se but if it was on the radio i'd probably turn it up a little bit so you can just kind of oh yeah, yeah same i i felt the same, same. <laughs> Kind of just like if it's there, it's there. I'll I'll listen to it, but yeah, I won't go actively look for, look it. for it, yeah, so to speak. But yeah, Jun Retsu no Happy uh, Happy Birthday sold a lovely twenty five thousand five hundred eighty one points there. And going on up, it's my girls pop and party with jo- Dreamers Go and Returns. This was a nice surprise because this these both these songs are different than their typical pop and party style like like i I know we mentioned this pre-show so i'm just going to reiterate it to me it sounds like um like like pop and party doing the vocals and like raise a sullen blended with like the music so it's like kind of like raise a sullen slash pop fusion sort of like there there's definitely like a a heavier guitar feel in the in both these songs and there normally is in a pop and party song and i really really liked it especially returns now returns is really long it's like six minutes but it's really good Really, really good song, and I, I was pleasantly surprised by this because I wasn't expecting it to be what it was. So that was nice. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm happy for Pop and Party to find their success. This is the eighth consecutive single to have made the Oricon, so congratulations to them. Our hats off to you. Our hats off to Bushy Road the Machine just taking my freaking money. I swear to God. That's their job. <laughs> That's. That's a job. That's a job, but you know it's a really good song. Regardless, I can't wait. They they actually performed this during their Silent Siren live, the No Girls No Cry. Oh yeah, live performance. So I was quite surprised to hear that they did it. Well, not really, because they'll probably use this their own car. But I'm quite happy. Pop and Party has found major success, and they're one of the first anime bands to go up on rocking japan and this is a huge thing for them i honestly i'm quite quite excited all joking aside i'm i'm really really excited to see how they're going to continue with this especially with the drummer ohashi ayaka she is she is probably one of the more busier ones out of the group no offense to like aimi and stuff like that with the other voice actresses but her specifically unless she has to do a live or something like that she usually doesn't show up for these shows like hell she never even showed up for chada expo this past year because flying her out to america was probably well beyond her contract (laughs) 
Yeah. So, but yeah, regardless, I'm I'm very happy that it placed. It's been it when they usually release a single, it's usually around this place that they always have it at. But yeah, Dreamers Go and Returns sold a lovely twenty eight thousand two hundred and ninety one points there. And going on up, it is number four with Pretenders with official Hikekidan. Dism. This is probably my song of the week, honestly. It's a close number it two. A, <laughs> I, I, it's it's it tough. It is a great song. Oh my lord, this song's amazing. Although none of these people have beards or facial hair of any kind. The, <laughs> I, was, I, I was I was really confused by the the name of the group because I like the like the logo of the group is a mustache, and I was expecting everybody to have like some sort of like facial hair, and they are all clean shaven. Because uh, hige, for the, those who don't know, means facial hair in Japanese. They don't have a word for a beard and mustache or anything like that. So they just have a, the term facial hair. And so I, I was expecting like bearded men to be singing the song, but they, there was no bearded men. <laughs> but this song is amazing, in spite the the lack of, of facial hair. Like this song is insanely good. The the uh, yeah. the instruments that they played were. Just, amazing the vocalist was insane like oh my lord if it wasn't for number two this would be my song of the week i don't, I don't know it's tough like, it's a it's a tough call like this is good though oh this is also on apple music so if you're interested you can pick it up on that on there i already downloaded it so i'm like uh, i'm gonna be listening to that this week i promise <laughs> but yeah pretender so they lovely 28,469 points and going on up to number three, it is Ishiki by HKT48. I'm very surprised that this just randomly showed up. On yeah, I was, I was like, why is this here? It's a little weird, but... Hey! Um, Sashi, Sashihara still has her pull, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're probably right about that one. I mean, nothing more we can say unless you have something to say more. No, no. I, I really liked Will. It's a good song. Go check it out. Yeah, Ishiki sold a lovely 36,246 points this time. And going on up, it is Machigai Isagashi by Masuda Suda. Masuda, I, for, I forget how to say his name. <laughs> uh, it's Matsuda Suda, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah. Or Masaki Suda, Masaki Suda. <laughs> by Misaki Suda. So, it's interesting to see this particular track. Because this was only download only, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. But, my lord. The pia- the piano is really, really freaking good in this song. <laughs> I, 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 I found his voice, and I'm, I'm familiar with him because he also done the last ending for My Hero Academia. He did Long Hope, Hope Philia. So, I, I'm, I'm familiar with him in that regard. But his voice in the song really shines through. Like, like the vocal work here is insane, and that and that piano work here is just oh my lord! This song is gorgeous. Like, I I, w- I was really surprised by this. So I mean, once I pieced it together that that he was the guy that did the last ending for My Hero Academia, I was already looking forward to his new album. But this this was really good. This this was really really good. Oh, yeah, it sold a lovely thirty nine thousand six hundred sixty six points, and going on up, it is number one with "Rain" by Kazuya Kamenashi and the former cartoon member Leading Man, if I remember correctly. Oh okay. Yeah, so that's another reason why it sold as well as yeah the- yeah i was like man this thing sold really well i mean it's a decent song i it, it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination i wasn't in love with it but yeah, it's pretty good it's it's a really good song i've 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 t- grown to like it because it's it's harkens back to his johnny days honestly well and it has a little bit of a johnny's feel to it so that's the why i love i love his solo songs really really because it does does harken to that feel every so often but yeah nothing more we can say there it sold a lovely 136,874 points it's all physical releases now <laughs> yep. yep 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 and let's peer over to the v- albums real real fast bts army go go army is still there not number 10 
uh, anger me's past and present and future is also ranked so good job for anger me i need that coin no acha acha in my life <laughs> Also, 1114 by Exile Shojiki made it onto the list there. And if you guys see that lovely track cover for the album, that's just how I look like it, <laughs> every single time I'm at work. Face palming? Just hand on face, face palming, because I'm so disappointed. <laughs> how did I get here on And Jin Akanishi's Thank You album so just as well. With Momo Ito Clover Z, this is the brand new relaunch after after one of their members graduated, and it sold fairly well. I'm quite not surprised at that. I knew that it was going to sell well regardless, but it's a surprise to see nonetheless. But yeah, with that, I want to say thank you for covering for Music Corner this week, by the way. And if you guys are keeping track... That was our 40th artist, and we'll be playing something very, very special in the next coming weeks where we are going to do what we did last time with our Indie Corner stuff, but we're going to be ranking them, so to speak. Oh, that's going to, I can imagine what I'm going to, I'm going to be taking a Prozac or something. Like, that. <laughs> <laughs> like you should already know my number yeah, one. Chong Mina. No, didn't do it's not Chong Mina. <laughs> Dream Imy. No, we, 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 dream Imy, Dream Imy, yes, exactly. Dream Imy, Penguin Rush. I actually have a Penguin Rush album. To, that was a that was a really good album. If you did, if you never got the the last Penguin Rush album, I recommend that. That is a good yeah. album. So, yeah, look forward to that. We'll be doing all that, and it's just gonna be me sucking ink stick again for like the next <laughs> next hour and a half. <laughs> Well, along with Narkartaki, I'm I, I'm quite impressed to talk about Narkartaki a little bit more now because you know we don't really get to talk about our indie corner and music corner people after we usually talk about them, unless it's related to a uh, article. Yeah. But I'm quite excited to actually talk more about these groups now because a lot of things happen with certain certain bands like Emerald signed with a label, so I I, I can't wait to talk more about that. But yeah, they'll look forward to that in the next coming weeks. It'll probably take place of a normal episode, so just be aware of that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you can find us on all the lovely social media stuff, such as Twitter and Instagram at Ongakadu. You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash Ongakadu. You can find us on the Facebooks also at Facebook slash groups slash Ongakadu. You. I probably butchered all that because I don't know how the title works. <laughs> well, when you're on you Facebook, find... just type in your search bar Ongakadu. You. You'll find us. Yeah, I'll find us. You can find our two affiliates you Hunter, he is our Japanese mailbox and our good friend. He is going through finishing up Resident Evil Week and he's going to be moving on to another gaming week there. So you can catch him at twitch.tv slash Koryu Hunter, K Y O R Y U H U N T E R. And you can check out our other affiliate, Timber Taff. He is a Twitch streamer in his own right and he does lovely, lovely covers of other anime songs such as Tensai Shitara Slime Daka Ken. So he did the ending for that anime that the time I got reincarnated as a slime. And you should check it out. It's actually really, really good. I'm quite surprised. I've never watched that anime. so I wasn't it, really huge on that I... ending. Do you think I'd like it? What, the ending of the anime? Yeah, yeah, because I watched the full series of that time I got reincarnated as a slime. No, I didn't care that, much for that, the ending song. <laughs> like, it's like, it's a song. Oh, oh well, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't watch the anime. The only anime I watch is Bang Dream related. <laughs> yeah, you watch uh, My Hero. My Hero! It's not on, so I'm not watching No, it, it won't be on until <laughs> October. Yeah. But yeah, you can check him out at twitch.tv slash timbertaf, T I M. T I M B E R T A F T. But yeah, uh, you can find me at Twitter at O T Y Ken One. You can find Renford at Renford D. That's R E N T F O R D D. You can find Luna at Luna Marie eighty seven. And where can we find you on Twitter? Ongaku Gray. Yes, yes, yes. And I want to thank you guys very much for listening to this week's episode of Ongaku to You. I'm your host, Ken, saying thank you very much, and have a great day. Aloha. And this is Gray. Hope you guys have a good week, and we'll talk to you next time.